has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, Pharrell back on Coast to Coast with your boy Carver High. And I hit that Brewers run and a half. Minus a buck fifty-five. They beat the Mets today, six to nothing in Milwaukee. Boy, did they need that one, Carver High. Now we got a bunch of games tonight to try to hit for everybody and make some money. We certainly do. It is amazing with the Braves and the Mets. Uh, each day, they both either win or they both lose. Uh, nobody it's seems crazy. to be able to gain any ground one way or the other Braves the lost. last seven to ten days uh, in that race. All right, here we go. Full slate tonight. The Red Sox are in Cincinnati again against the Red Scott. Your boy Seabold is going for the Sox tonight. Who? Anderson goes for the Reds. Right now, Boston minus 155 plus a buck 25 for Cincinnati. Ten and a half the big total at Great American. Yeah, I don't, uh, frankly, trust either one of these teams. I think they both stink. And, I, you know, I bet on the Red Sox last night. I'm going to bet on them again tonight. But I think this is going to be a good game tonight. And for me, it's indicative of that high total. I think it's going to be a wild game. I think Cincinnati will be in it. I'm on Boston, though. And now, I have my, I, I do have my druthers about uh, that ten and a half. I, I'm not, I, I'm not going over that. I'm going to stay under. Marcus Stroman and Asus Lazardo tonight, South Beach style. Cubbies and the Fish down in Miami. Minus 110 both ways for this one. The low six and a half total tonight in Miami. I actually am betting on uh, Stroman. I, I just, you know, if I'm going to take, you know, Lazardo, Stroman in a game, I'm going to pick Stroman. I like his work. He's thrown twice as many innings. Uh, they both have about the same ERA. Uh, Cubs got them last night. I'm going to go back to the well with the Cubs. Astros and the Rays again tonight at the Trop. Lance McCullers and Corey Kluber are your starters. Astros road favorites again, minus 125, plus 105 for the Rays. Seven flat the total. You know, I'm under here. I think McCullers has been unbelievable. Uh, a 2-3 ERA. The Astros have made the Rays their B. I mean, they are just B-slapping them. And all I know is uh, they finish it off tonight. I'm on I'm on Houston. Yankees and the Buccos again at the stadium, of course. Everybody uh, will be awaiting the at-bats for Aaron Judge tonight, looking for 61. But also, Luis Severino back on the mound for the Yankees for the first time in a long time. Contreras goes for the Pirates. Yankees are minus 275. Seven and a half is the total. I mean, there's just no way I'm betting on uh, the Pirates against the Yankees. Uh, and, and, you know, I didn't last night and I won't tonight. I don't care what the price is. They had no business, as I said earlier today, winning that game last night, but they still did. Uh, the Pirates have no business, in my view, being anywhere in the same vicinity of the Yankees. The Yankees should kick their ass. That's all there is to it. And not only that. They should beat their ass and cover a run and a half. I cannot believe, I can't even fathom that I didn't cover one and a half last night with the Yankees. It makes me sick to my stomach. And that Braves game, up 3-1 in the ninth, to give that crap Nats team a run and had the bases loaded, they could have lost. And then to lose to them today, I, I thought today a, a literal certainty that they would beat them today and dance with the Mets. And look what they blew. The Mets lose and the Braves could have been inside their heads. 29 runs scored in Philadelphia last night, Scotty, between the Blue Jays and the Phillies. Tonight, Kevin Gossman and Zach Wheeler returning off the IL will try to keep the runs down. We do welcome in all of our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast, Sirius XM, Channel 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have everybody with us. Phillies minus 115 with Wheeler, Scotty, Blue Jays minus 105, eights the total. Look, I think the Jays can beat them, and I am on Wheeler and the Phillies, but he hasn't pitched in a month. So I have my concerns, let's just put it that way. And the Phillies suddenly have stubbed their toe. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if Toronto beats him. I took a shot with Wheeler because he's their man, 
and hopefully you can come back healthy and go out and give them five strong, and then uh, they can get their bats going a little bit. They got their ass beat last night. I mean, Toronto's a better team than the Phillies. I agree. The Tigers have beat the Orioles the last two nights at Camden. They try again tonight. Manning goes for them. Jordan Lyles for the Birds. Orioles minus 150, plus a buck 25 for the Tigers. Eight and a half the total. Put a fork in them. The Orioles are finished, but if they don't win this game tonight, it's the most insulting thing that's happened to them all season long. Getting swept by the Tigers is flat out fat chick embarrassing. <laughs> Angels are in Arlington again tonight. Dane Dunning against Davidson. Rangers minus 145, plus 120 for Anaheim. Eight and a half the total. I mean, Christ almighty, can the Texas Rangers win a game at home? Uh, they've lost four in a row. Like, if they don't win this game tonight, you know what they should do? Uh, go get Clayton Kershaw at least for one year. You spent $550 million on a bunch of hacks. You can't even win a game at home against the Angels. Honest to God. The Guardians will come back with the Guardians, Scotty. After the break, we'll do the Guardians and the White Sox, the rest of the West Coast games. We still have a bunch of NFL to do. We have a couple of college things to do. And the President's Cup starts tomorrow too, Scotty. You know, we got to get you a little dubsy on the President's Cup as well before we get out of here today. Well, I know how excited you get about betting on golf. Thank God somebody does. Uh, I'm all over the rest of these baseball games. I got a lot, a, a lot of inches to scratch. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast the to PBG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decisions. But this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. Prove how much better they are than Texas. This actually matters. Winning this game 65 nothing matters because see they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52 to 10. Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing on average eight points per game. They held Kent State to just three points last week, Kevin. We talked about that total mm -hmm. on last week's show. College football today, only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What do the Tennessee Titans need to change on the ground to get Derrick Henry back to what we expect for the King? The Tennessee Titans are a run first team. That is their identity, right? You run the ball to set up the pass. That is where they start their entire offense and they go from there. So obviously when the run game isn't working, the whole offense is starting to struggle and stall, especially when you don't have a top wide receiver. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. This is going to be a phenomenal season for these two teams because right now they look like they can't be stopped on offense on both sides. So for looking at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now, conference winners, the AFC, the favorite of the clubhouse, the Buffalo Bills at a plus 240 price, followed by the Kansas City Chiefs at a plus 360, and the NFC Championship winner currently the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at a plus 310. But how about this? The Philadelphia Eagles pulling into a tie with the Green Bay Packers at a 5-1 to one price. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. Carver, if I had a gun to my head, I'd still take the Ravens over the Patriots on the money line and laying three, even in Foxborough. But it won't be easy because they play a unique brand of football when they play at Gillette. The Ravens need to do the same thing they did against the Dolphins this week because the Patriots don't have the kind of offense that can come back 
from 20 plus points down. The Sports Grid Network. I'm going rogue on you tonight, Carver High. I'm hitting so many baseball bets. I mean, it really is. It's ridiculous. Let's finish this up. Uh, Let's finish it up. We have a few more games. Uh, Cleveland and the White Sox again. The Guardians looking to extend this to six games in the Central. Tristan McKenzie against Lance Lynn tonight, Scotty. The White Sox minus 135, plus 110 for the guards, eight the total. It is all on the line tonight for the White Sox. If they don't win this game, it is Darcy Rodeville. I mean, it is over. So I'm on Lance Lynn. I like the White Sox to win tonight on the south side and to beat McKenzie. Give me Chicago. The Twins in Kansas City again tonight. Of course, we already mentioned big changes there. Their longtime president, Moore, out the door. Uh, Tonight, you have Lynch against Ober. Twins, the road favorite, minus 130, plus 105 for Kansas City, 7.5 the total. I talked to a guy today. He said, "Uh, what do you think of that uh, Royals game? Uh, We were talking about Pharrell and Avenge.com, and I said, the Royals cannot win two games in a row if the other team was passed out drunk in the clubhouse uh, and couldn't make the start of the game. I'm on the Twins. That's that. The Royals suck. Logan Webb and Herman Marquez at Coors Field tonight. Giants and the Rockies one more time. Giants minus 140, plus 115 for Colorado. A little lower total than normal at Coors Field. Nine and a half. Usually we get ourselves some 11s, 11 and a half, 12s. Nine and a half tonight. Well, I mean, I think that some of that uh, goes to the fact that you got uh, Webb going and he doesn't give up a lot of runs. I like San Francisco to win the game, but uh, Marquez is their best pitcher. So this could very well stay under and the Rockies could very well be in this game. I took the Giants, however. The Mariners lost at the ashtray last night as we saw Castillo tonight. Uh, Robbie Ray will uh, get the ball. James Caprillion for uh, the Athletics at the ashtray. Minus 200 for Seattle. Seven the total. Well, I think last night they obviously showed that they just don't give a flying F about the game uh, because they bent over and didn't even try. They were up one nothing, and then they're like, you know what? Pass the bubble gum. I mean, they were spitting sunflower seeds and rubbing their onions and chewing gum and spitting seeds and making phone calls to their girlfriends for after the game. Uh, So I would think the same thing will happen tonight. There's no way I'm not betting on Robbie Ray. I think the A's will be in it, though, based on what I saw last night. It was so embarrassing. But I did take Seattle again. I hate that price, though. Christ, I bent over last night on that game. God, that sucked. Cardinals at Petco again against the Padres tonight. Miles Mikolas against Blake Snell. The Padres minus 135. Cardinals plus 110. Seven and a half the total. Lefty going. Snell, that means we probably get Pujols in the lineup tonight, Scotty. I like Michaelis and the Cardinals at that piece, that price, to make us some money tonight. Give me St. Louis at Petco to stop their five-game winning streak. And finally, Dustin May for the Dodgers tonight. Heavy lumber, minus Done three deal. bills. With Madison Bumgarner going for the Diamondbacks, plus 248 and a half the total. Any way you got to bet it, it's the Dodgers. It's just any way you got to bet it. I mean, no matter how much money you bet, it's going to be the Dodgers. Uh, I'm with you. Dodgers is the way to go, however you would like to, uh, even minus that one and a half. Uh, That's for sure. All right, Scotty, there you go. The night in baseball. Let's hit a lot of tickets. We got a lot of props out there for you as well. NFL pain day time. We've hit the midweek. Get ourselves a little closer to the first game of week three. Steelers and the Browns in Cleveland tomorrow night, Scotty, to get us going for Thursday night football. Steeler offense the first couple of weeks could be a little bit better than they've been. That's for sure. Let's hear from Mitch Trubisky, Scotty. 
Thinks he needs to let the air out a little bit more, get it going, go downfield. Tomlin said uh, yesterday that the, both you can be aggressive, more aggressive and we can be more aggressive. Yeah. Do you see that in the plan? Do you, does the plan need to be more aggressive or can you see where it should be? No, it's there. It's there. And we had our opportunities. I think earlier I can uh, take shots downfield. Uh, I think I could uh, look for so a four team more often. George, uh, he's doing a great job for us, and I just got to get these playmakers of football, whether that's uh, whatever route they're running. I tell the uh, truth, I even when ball. I lie. So it, it really comes down to me making better decisions, being aggressive, and uh, and, and giving, putting us ourselves in that position. I mean, honestly, tough guy, just start throwing the ball. Get out of the pocket, move and, and throw it. You did it with Friar Muth. You did it two weeks in a row with Friar Muth. Get the ball downfield. Stop with your boring Canada off-tackle runs by Harris that don't gain a half a yard. Their offense is like bread without butter. It is just awful. Honestly, dude, do some effing thing tomorrow night. If I have to sit here and watch them Blow another game against the Cleveland Browns. Honestly, I don't know. I, I may not even make it to work Friday. Uh, honestly, I may. I'll be. I end up in a rubber room. Well, we do not want that. Uh, George Pickens said he was open ninety percent of the time. On he Sunday. was. Uh, Mitch got to go find him uh, in that game tomorrow night. Brown side of things, they were still talking about their awful loss to the Jets on Sunday in the final two minutes. Here's Kevin Stefanski taking the blame, of course, Scotty, as the head coach always does. Here he is. I mean, we have a very, very accountable group. Uh, having said that, I've addressed those things. That put it on me, um, those type of things. So uh, yeah, the, the players me. don't hide from it. I don't hide from it. Uh, for us, the focus really goes to Thursday night. Yeah, you know what? The whole team's on Xanax because of that loss. I mean, yeah. you're all eating Zanny bars because that was so awful. I, I don't, I, literally, I, I feel like I got a buckshot right in my chest uh, watching them blow that lead with a minute left. I mean, I was like, what in the F is happening here? And I blame him. I blame Chubb. I blame all. I pray to God that the Steelers beat them tomorrow night in Cleveland. I can't stand any. I can't even look at it. Let's hear from Jacoby Brissett as well. Like you said, they're all on Xanax. They're all trained to say the same thing. Uh, he sucks. One behind us. This guy sucks. <laughs> Getting ready. He is so feelings. bad. Here we go. Yeah, I think Kevin kind of set that precedent uh, in the locker room. He was like, hey, man, we, 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 as much as we have, what, the, an excuse to, to let it lag, we, we, we can't. Uh, and, uh, I think the guys have accepted that challenge and, and um, you know, we've come out focused in, in these walkthroughs and energy and, and, um, and uh, so looking forward to Thursday. What? Oh, yeah, so much to get back in, in order when you have those brutal walkthroughs. Walkthroughs, of course, on the short week. We can't ramp it up too much. Uh, now, Miles Garrett has some sort of a neck issue, Scotty, but sounds like he's going to be okay to go tomorrow night. This has trickled back down to four and a half. Remember, we were talking about some five and a halves the last couple of days. Back down to Browns minus four and a half. And of course, the robust total of 38 and a half tomorrow night in this game. Yeah, I, I can see why no one wants to go anywhere near the over with that Steeler offense. Fair enough. But I think they've covered five straight times against them. I like the four and a half. I love the four and a half. And I, I actually kind of like the over. I, I, I think that I, I, think I do that too. Both, Just I, when I think everyone thinks you teams, suck, they'll go out and put up 50. I, I think that we might get maybe a defensive touchdown or two. I think that both teams will be able to get in the end zone once or twice a few times. Maybe. I think both teams are in the low 20s. Uh, I, I like that over 38 and a half tomorrow, Scotty. We'll do some more NFL when we uh, come back to hear from a few other guys. God, I pray to God the Steelers win in Cleveland. Honestly, <laughs> screw everyone in Cleveland. I'm just kidding.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The game that I find to be the most fascinating spread in all of the country today because it doesn't seem large enough. College football today. It's the island of misfit tours. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand. Some survivor pools for the most part because. Pro football I don't today. With. Most important player, despite not being quarter focused of it, and I, I think that continues to be a really important part of the offense. In game, in game. In game. I said it'll be a pure track me shootout. Half in game. I'm not one who's going to cheer for Kylo Murray, but I am cheering for him in the second half. In game live oh, overtime. One block in nine Ks. And I almost, I almost read it as if it was a question. Like, what are they I doing? The game when they were football you know, full circle, plus one and a half. I mean, this was an insane amount of Get line the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid, your twenty four seven sports wagering network. I'm slightly conflicted, is because I feel like I love so much on the board, but do I love one thing more than another? Can I call one thing my favorite bet? For my best bet, we'll find out. And there's just overall chaos is what it looks like with this offense. On fourth down, Jacoby Myers and Davian Harris running into each other, but the Patriots getting bailed out by a P.I. down the field. The morning after, only on SportsGrid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow, and we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason. Talk about the bad beach all the time. That's a good win, you know, because it, it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. <laughs> watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. Sports professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, the Bundesliga and the NFL have announced a powerful arrangement that begins as early as this November in Munich, where Tampa Bay is playing Seattle at Allianz Arena, and they motivate a deal with the largest sporting entity in Germany, going back and forth every year, Munich one year, Frankfurt the next, and the Bundesliga will provide back-of-the-house support and marketing help for the NFL. The NFL will bring its magic over to Germany and be able to support it as well. Remember the WFL, World League of American Football, and otherwise, their most exciting franchises were Frankfurt, Berlin, the Rhine Fire. It was expats. Now it's much larger a relationship, and this deal will no doubt take it to another level. Sports professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. So my buddy in uh, Atlanta uh, reached out in the middle of the show and he said, uh, why do you call that guy Carver High? I said, wait, do you have the BetMGM app? You get a thousand dollar risk-free bet if you use the code coast to coast. And he's like, yeah, I signed up. And, and he said, why do you call him Carver High? What is he, the white shadow? I said, that's exactly why I call him Carver High. He's like, that's awesome. I go, thanks. Don't bother me doing don't bother you during the show. Just make sure you sign up for the BetMGM app and use That's code true. Coast to Coast. That's really all that matters. The Bills, as we've talked about several times, heading to South Beach to take on the Dolphins this week. Let's hear from head coach Sean McDermott lounging, Scotty, in his office after beating the hell out of the Titans on Monday night. A nice, cool victory Tuesday for Sean as he gets ready for the Dolphin offense. You know, a small sample uh, under, under the new head coach and the new staff there. Uh, there is continuity on the defensive side, more so than the offensive side with our coaching staff. Continuity as well on special teams. So we have a little bit more film on those set, on those sides of the balls, respectively. Um, offense is a little bit less. So um, they look like they're playing at a very high level. And um, they're 2-0 against two really, really good football teams. Um, so on a short week here for us, you know, we've got to get rest and then, and then get back to work here and, uh, and put together a good week of preparation. Yeah, it's not a short week to me when you're that good. It's six days later. Let's dance. Uh, we've been talking a lot about that five and a half. 
Uh, at the very second, Scotty, I now see that it has ticked up to six. Uh, so yeah, it Bills is. minus six uh, in Miami on Sunday, 52 and a half, uh, a very hefty total. We know already what we're doing in this game. Uh, we're laying it. We're laying it on Sunday in Miami. Yeah, and I, you know, I think the over is active. Uh, these teams score yeah. a lot. They go deep a lot. They throw it all the time. They just keep pounding. And uh, I think there's a chance for all of that. And I already got it at five and a half. I'm done with this. Let's see. It starts at five and a half and they kick it off at seven and a half. I'm done with all that. I, it drives me nuts. Uh, it's just like they're effing with me with their toy numbers. And they just keep moving that toy around. I, ha- I hate it. Bills will be without one of their offensive linemen. Uh, Bobby Hart got suspended one game for swinging at a Titans player after the game on Monday night. He ended up hitting one of their coaches. Nobody saw this because everybody turned the game off after the third quarter and had no idea that it even happened. So there was a fracas at the end of the game involving Bobby Hart. He will now miss Sunday's game against Isn't the Isn't he Dolphins. in the WWE, the Hart brothers? Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, good stuff there. Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, Scotty. Going to MetLife to face the Giants on Monday Night Football. Let's hear from Jerry. Of course, he does that weekly spot on the fan in Dallas praising Cooper Rush after a big win on Sunday. Anyway, I like the way that uh, uh, the team played. Uh, I'll I'll get to Cooper. Uh, Cooper uh, gives us a chance not to take anything out of our offense. He knows it all. And he really uh, is is very, uh, I'm going to use the word again, he's very comfortable uh, in our offense, and he's been working with Kellen Moore for years. Uh, he's been working with a receiver like Wilson for years. A lot of those guys have been around him and uh, repetitions in practice as well as, uh, uh, of course, uh, the time that he did play last year with a win over Minnesota. So uh, I like what we're seeing there. Uh, Greer uh, behind him uh, had a good week, a real good week. Greer looked good in training camp. Uh, frankly, I feel good where we are right now with, uh, uh, given uh, Dak is out, which we all know what a concern that is, but I uh, feel pretty good about a quarterback. Uh, you know, I love Jerry uh, being on the show all the time. I also uh, think he's crazy, and I, that's what I like about him. And I'm crazy enough to take the Cowboys outright, plus one at the Meadowlands, whatever the hell you want to call it, in East Rutherford at the Snoopy Bowl. I think they can beat the Giants. Yes, Cowboys getting one right now. Monday Night Football, another low total, 39. Like, I, I like a- I like Diggs. I like Parsons. I like – I yeah. really, you know, like, you know, Pollard and, and Zeke. I like the and Cowboys too. I, I, you know, I like CD. I like uh, the chances of Rush as much, if not equal to, or better than uh, Danny Dimes. I think Dimes, like I watched him again. He was the same old quarterback against the Panthers as he always was his first four years where he just does nothing the whole game and they kick field goals. That's it. Uh, I'm with you. I'm on the Cowboys uh, on Monday night. I like that over too. I think that these numbers are getting low. And one of these weeks, could be this week, could be next week, I think we're going to start to see some overs bust out. I know the unders, or Dave told you yesterday, 21, 10 and 1, yeah. something like that to the under. Uh, the overs are coming. The Titans are 0 and 2 after being the number one seed in the AFC a year ago, Scotty. So is there panic? No, they have the 0 and 2 Raiders coming into their place on Sunday. Mike Vrabel says, we got to get this behind us and start winning some football games. I think we just have to. Um get back and, and and again these guys were ready to go i've asked them to you know put this behind us as quickly as possible uh it's difficult it, it's it's never um a great experience losing losing on the road losing in a big game um losing in the manner in which we lost it we we have to move on i think the, the guys that have been in here today so far have, have tried to do that um and, and get back to work and get back to work together uh, do it uh, do it together with, with all of us, the coaching staff, the players, um, you know, working together. Yeah, look, uh, they look like crap. Let's stop with all this other rhetoric. I mean, that great season they had uh, seems like 10 years ago, doesn't it? Because that performance against Buffalo was anemic. And, and he was trying to sell us yesterday that they had good moments early on. No, yeah. 
No, they did not. So 0-2 Titans, 0-2 Raiders. Minus 2.5 for Vegas road favorites on Sunday. This right here is a very dangerous game, Scotty, that I don't think I really want any part of uh, on Sunday. Very dangerous game. I think that, obviously, they're both desperate for a win, and the Titans are playing at home. So I'm on the Titans. I, I, you're, you got to travel, you know, 2,500 miles. You got to go there and, and go and stay in a hotel and go play them. They're both in dire straits. I'll take the home team here. I'm going to go Titans. I don't trust either one of them. I love Carr and Adams, but the rest of that Raider team, besides Crosby, you can throw out with the recyclables. I'm with you. If I had to go anywhere, I'm probably going to back uh, the home dog. with. The I Titans. like Waller, right, though. Yes. Yesterday, we played that clip of Justin Fields uh, basically saying, eh, you know, the fans don't care as much as us. We're in the locker room, blah, 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 blah. So this morning, Scotty, of course, Justin Fields had to walk all of that talk about the fans back. A heartfelt apology from Justin Fields this morning over at the Bears complex. You know, I was, I was mad after the game. And, I mean, I'd, I'd like to address this now to get everything cleared up. But, you know, there was a thing that I said on Sunday after the game where I said, you know, um, the fans don't put in work. And when I was, you know, first off, um, you know, I was frustrated after the game. So, you know, number one, I didn't want to come and talk to you guys. Um, I wasn't in the mood to come and talk to you guys. So, um, you know, I should have did a better job explaining what I meant by that. But um, what I meant by that was I'm talking about work, you know, regarding uh, the game on Sunday, winning the game. You know, I don't know any fans. I don't know what they're doing in their personal lives. Um, and I respect every fan that we have. I'm, you know, glad that we have fans. So, um, you know, I would never disrespect, you know, anybody on what they do or what they love to do. Um, and, you know, that was, you know, it came off like that. And, of course, you know, some social media outlets, they, you know, quoted my quote and, you know, they got a big buzz on it. So, uh, of course, they did a great job doing that. And, of course, social media is going to do that. But, yeah, I just wanted to clear that up right now. And, you know, back now. Blame social media so for your <laughs> mouth. Yeah, blame social media. There you go. Blame the media for everything. These guys are so pathetic when they do that. It's like, bro, what the problem is is that, uh, you know, and he's a really talented guy, making all kinds of money. And the problem is he's like, whatever, 22, 23 years old. I don't know what he is. And most kids that I know that are that age, uh, they don't know Shaq. You think you do. You think you're, you are you think you got it all. You got all the answers. You're all so clever and you got everything figured out. And really, uh, my dad used to say it best. You don't know Shaq. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Stop talking. No one listens to you and they never will. Call me when you're 40. And then, you know, after 40 on, uh, I'll give you something. I'm not listening to some 23 year old kid give uh, business advice or anything else uh, in the NFL. Uh, he needs to think before he opens his big fat mouth. And here's another thing. He sucks. He threw for 60 yards in that game on Sunday. I mean, it was pathetic. Like, how do you throw? You're an NFL quarterback making millions, and you can't throw for 100 yards? I mean, honestly, bro, you suck. So shut your mouth, and if you don't like the media, then don't do the interviews. And then, you know, pay the tab. I mean, if you're that much of a wussy, just pay the tab. <laughs> Probably my favorite play this week. I love the Bears at home against the Texans. I <laughs> think it's my favorite game of the entire weekend. Yeah, I trust hope them. More than trust them and I see how long you live. <laughs> they suck. I hope he throws. I hope he throws for more than 60 yards this week. 49ers sign running back Marlon Mack to the active roster. Akeem Hicks of the Bucks expected to miss one month with a foot injury. Anybody else on the Bucks want to get hurt uh, here early on in the season? NFL also had to send a letter to Bruce Arians about his role in the brawl Sunday. He was on the sidelines. He was yelling at people. He was in the coach's box. I thought he was retired smoking cigars and drinking margaritas, Scotty. I guess not for Bruce uh, as he gets the law laid down from the NFL. Joe Hayden retired after 12 years. Tua, Jalen Watson, and Jets punter Braden Mann named AFC Players of the Week. Brown, Slay, and Gano, NFC Players of the Week. I think it's strange that Arians is stalking around the sideline like he's still the best yeah, around his heart line.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play less Rogers and The morning after. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game Packers. time decisions. Look, this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live win. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. All American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brentsy. I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J-E-T-S, just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In-game live all access only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. They have a 52.2 cover percentage within the division throughout the last eight years because we look back at the 2014 season the last time Indy won on the road in Jacksonville pretty much my point being the AFC South stinks the Jags are the only team with a win and their updated win total is still just six and a half it was the number before the year got underway let me take the over on Jacksonville the sports grid network the early line well what do you know the Bills go out there and embarrass the Titans. The number now is two and a half on Vegas. They're nearly a field yeah. goal road favorite against last year's number one seed in the AFC. And that's a Raiders team, again, that just blew a 20-0 halftime lead against the Arizona Cardinals. The Tennessee Titans right now look like they are being treated as one of the lower teams in the marketplace right now. Only on Sports Grid. As you know, Carver High, uh, college football is my bag. I love yeah. betting on college football, and I'm damn good at it. So uh, let's talk a little college football, shall we? Yes, let's do that. And before I give you several games for this coming weekend, we did the heavies yesterday, but there's a lot of other games we need to take a look at here on a Wednesday. Before we do that, we have some people for you. We will start with Mike Gundy, Oklahoma State head coach, who, of course, is one of the all-time greats. I mean, he's got some of the greatest press conference moments, uh, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, of not just football, but in anything. I'm a man. I'm 40. So, of course, this Bedlam story started to pick up steam again, the AD saying that they're not going to play the game. We've known this for months. Gundy doesn't want to hear about it anymore, Scotty. He's done talking about it. It's not their fault he's not playing the game. He says, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Here we go. Bedlam is history. We all know that. It's, we've known that. Because OU chose to follow Texas and the money to the SEC. It's okay. Is that a fact? Okay. So now, we're having what I think are childish discussions, in my opinion. Okay? Over something that's done. And I would like to like make this the last statement I have because I have no hard feelings, but What's going on now is, is almost a situation with a husband and a wife or a girlfriend and a boyfriend. When you know you're dead wrong and you try to turn the table and make them think they're wrong, 
when Oklahoma State has no part in this. We didn't have anything to do with their negotiations with the SEC. We didn't have any choice on choosing to leave the conference. They did. So everybody needs to get over it and move on and quit trying to turn the tables. It's somewhat comical that they still want to bring us into this equation. Uh, he's right. It's all yeah. on uh, the Sooners and Longhorns and money, and it has nothing to do with Oklahoma State. And you know what's great is that uh, now they can become the king of the castle because they can be the best team in football and you know, like old school, like Sutton days, they could actually be a power in basketball again. So, I mean, the bottom line is, is that with Texas and Oklahoma there, it made it rough sledding to win that conference. And I think that it's now uh, their world. And he is absolutely right. Uh, not their fault. And that's why people are going to him. Why are you guys not going to play Oklahoma anymore? Go ask them. They're the ones who did that, not us. All right, here's a new one. Drake May, who's he, Scotty? He's the quarterback for the North Carolina Tar Heels. They are 3-0. and They face uh, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame at home, Chapel Hill, coming up on Saturday. We love honesty on Coast to Coast. Our boy Drake dropped a little honesty yesterday about people in the state of North Carolina and what school they really want to go to. Here he is. You know, whether you, know, you, you want to admit it or not, growing up in Carolina, you're going to be a Carolina fan. Um, and, you know, some people may say state, but really people go to state just can't get into Carolina. So, um, oh. at the end of the day, you know, playing for Carolinas, a lot of people um, from North Carolina want to do. Well, that'll do it. Uh, I'll take North Carolina State when they play, and I think that he's going to have a long day, and he's going to eat that uh, sandwich for sure. But then again, Carver High, we all love having a large sandwich. They play the Wolfpack in late November, Scotty. Uh, of course, big rivalry matchup. And trust me, uh, the North Carolina State Wolfpack will probably play that clip the week of the game. Uh, oh, yeah, they uh, will. Mr. Mr. May and uh, the Tar Heels come to town. Now, I actually, bad job I made it's because Notre Dame sucks so much. I actually didn't put that on any of my three boards. So before we go to these other games, let's start there. Irish dogs. In North Carolina, Saturday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff. I got to tell you, I think they should be dogs. You're talking about an undefeated uh, Carolina team that's uh, had to fight for every one of those wins. The App State game was crazy, but they got it done. Uh, I think May's a way better quarterback than Pine. I think uh, North Carolina's a better football team than Notre Dame. Notre Dame, they could barely beat Cal. I mean, they literally, that yeah. was a struggle. They got it done, and they covered. I think they, they covered. No, they didn't cover the No, they 12. did not. They did not cover, but they won. They finally gave Freeman a win. And I think they go on the road to Chapel Hill and lose. All right, let's rip through a couple more of these on Saturday. Central Michigan, the Chippewas go to Happy Valley to take on Penn State. Heavy lumber here, 27 and a half for the Nittany Lions. 3-0 Duke visits 3-0 Kansas. Minus 7.5 for the Jayhawks. The U laying a fat piece against Middle Tennessee State down in Miami. Minnesota and Michigan State. Interesting game in the Big Ten coming up this week. Minnesota, I like them, Scotty, against Sparty. I like the way Minnesota's played so far. Yeah, I, Michigan State had a really rough trip out to Husky Stadium in Seattle. That's a brutal 3,000-mile loss waiting to happen. They go home to uh, East Lansing. They'll beat Minnesota. And then um, Miami, I have my druthers. If they can cover that fat number, they couldn't do it against Southern Miss, and they look bad against a &M. Suddenly, I'm supposed to believe they'll, they'll win by 28 against Middle Tennessee, who is, frankly, uh, better than Southern Miss, I think. And then I think Kansas wins in Lawrence, but I think Duke covers. Duke is scoring a lot of points. At, they're averaging 30-plus every game. They are lighting it up, throwing the ball, scoring, blah, 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 blah. I like them to cover the number. I don't want any part of betting that Kansas game. I've had two weeks in a row where I got an enema from Kansas. So I want no part of it, but I do think Duke will cover. And I, I think, believe it or not, Penn State wins that game, but they do not cover against Central Michigan. Central Michigan has covered and won every game they played. They have been in every game they've played, and it's because no one respects them at all. 
Indiana off the overtime win against Western Kentucky. They play Cincinnati this week, Scotty. They're getting a fat number on the road against the Bearcats. How about Iowa and Rutgers? There's only one reason why I put that game up. 34 is the total in Piscataway between the Hawkeyes and the Scarlet Knights. Vandy visits Alabama. 40-piece there. Kansas State has beaten Oklahoma last couple of years, Scotty. Outright. They're getting 13 and a half in Norman. Yeah, not this year. Uh, they lost to Tulane, so they're going to lose uh, in Norman, as sure as I'm sitting here. And I think Alabama's going to absolutely cook Vanderbilt. And the reason that number is so low in the Rutgers game in Piscataway is because Rutgers hasn't completed a pass the entire <laughs> season. I mean, they have a total of 130 yards passing in their games. Yeah. I like them to cover, though, because Iowa sucks monkey ball still. And then <laughs> okay. Indiana, you're giving them way too much uh, wood there. Cincinnati mm. is no better, frankly, than Western Kentucky. They lost Ritter. They lost guys, yeah. Sauce Gardner. They are rebuilding. It's obvious. They can barely win a game. So I don't think they cover against the Hoosiers. I, the Hoosiers are not good. They should have lost to Western Kentucky easily. They pulled that one out of their arse, winning in overtime, uh, and the, the or the last second kick, whatever it was, by the kid uh, from Indiana, one way or the other. I hit Indiana to win, but I had Western Kentucky in six and a half. I think Indiana, you're giving them way too many points in Cincinnati. I think it'll be a good game around 12 to 14 points. It's not going to be 17. And we'll fire through the rest of these. Undefeated Florida State takes on Boston College under the lights Saturday night in Tallahassee. You've also got UConn and NC State this week. A fat number there in Raleigh. Utah visits Arizona State off of firing Herm. They're laying 14 and a half, the Utes on the road. And Washington, off the big win against Michigan State, has Stanford coming into Seattle, who's been very tricky with them the last couple of years. But I like Penix with the 13 and a half. Yeah, look, uh, so I'm on um, Florida State on the money line, but I like BC to give them a game in Tallahassee, believe it or not, at Doe Campbell under the lights. Uh, BC is in the games they play, right? Uh, I think North Carolina State Wolfpack will shred UConn. I think... Utah will literally peel off Arizona State. They fired their coach. They're under investigation. They are quitters. They're going to get rolled like a spleef. And Stanford will cover at Husky Stadium. This is a great Pac-12 game. Generally, it's good. I think this is going to be one of the games of the night. Washington's big game was last week, and they came up big. And now they got to turn around and play Stanford in a Pac-12 game at home. Thank God they're at home. I'll give them the money line, but not the spread. There you go. All this, a lot more of this week's college football action. Tomorrow on Coast to Coast, we have three games tomorrow night, including West Virginia and Virginia Tech. Thursday night college football starts this week, Scotty. All right. The President's Cup, Quail Hollow in Carolina. The United States are minus 700 favorites. Let's hear from Dubsy. It's the President's Cup this week. David taking on Goliath. The Internationals right up against it this week, taking on Team USA in a tournament which the Americans have absolutely feasted on in the past. This is the 14th playing of the event. The Internationals have only ever won it once. Now, that scares me. I look at these lineups on paper. It is going to be a daunting task for the internationals led by Trevor Immelman. I mean, look at Davis Love's lineup here. Scotty Scheffler, Morikawa, JT, Jordan Spieth, Cameron Young, Paddy Cantlay, Xander Shoffley. You throw in a dog like Kevin Kisner. They've got form. They've got pedigree. They've got experience. They've got match play experience. A lot of them played in that Ryder Cup there last year where they dominated the Europeans. For the internationals this week, I mean, Trevor Immelman, he has to pull something out of the sleep, but... Where are the points coming from? You can't pull those out of the sleeve, Trevor. We got Hideki Matsuyama, Sung Jaim, then who? Adam Scott, Corey Connors, Taylor Pendrith, Mito Pereira. It should be an absolute whitewash. But 
It is match play. Strange things can happen. I just don't see strange things happening for four days to make this a close one. We're going to see foursomes on Thursday, four ball Friday, a bit of both on Saturday, then finish on Sunday over at Quail Hollow with 12 individual match play efforts. Mano Imano, 30 possible points up for grabs. You look at the golf course. This is where we usually play the Wells Fargo Championship, Quail Hollow, past 71, over 7,500 yards. This is a brood of a golf course. The key stats I'm looking at, strokes gain off the tee, strokes gain on approach, and X factor. You need that clutch factor, that mindset, that situational awareness to make the big putts when you have to, to stay in the hole, to steal one from your opponent and keep momentum on your side. Again, match play golf, it's a different animal, but I look at the golf course, it tells me Team USA. I look at the lineups, it has to be the Americans for Trevor Inwoman, the internationals. I just can't see where the points are coming from, but Dubsy's an international, so give me an Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, 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 bring on the President's Cup, baby. Yeah, yeah. that's not happening, Dubs. Here's the deal. No. Um, one thing I wanted to say before your picks is that Quail Hollow, by the way, has no members that ever went to North Carolina State. They're not educated <laughs> enough. Only Tar Heel rich members that went <laughs> to uh, Chapel members. Hill. Uh, very simple. We're going after top point scorers. For the American, Scotty, he's not even on the board who I'm going to. Jordan Spieth is going to play in every single event over the next four days, and he's 10 to 1. He's going to be partnered with JT in the group pairings. I'm taking Spieth at 10 to 1 for the most points for the USA, and I'm taking Connors' most points for the international. Okay. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. This is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it four and a half. In game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. All-American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brancy. I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J-E-T-S, just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In-game live all access only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. They have a 52.2 cover percentage within the division throughout the last eight years because we look back at the 2014 season, the last time Indy won on the road in Jacksonville. Pretty much my point being, the AFC South stinks. The Jags are the only team with a win, and their updated win total is still just six and a half. It was the number before the year got underway. Let me take the over on Jacksonville. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Well, what do you know? The Bills go out there and embarrass the Titans. The number now is two and a half on Vegas. They're nearly a field yeah. goal road favorite against last year's number one seed in the AFC. And that's a Raiders team, again, that just blew a 20-0 halftime lead against the Arizona Cardinals. 
The Tennessee Titans right now look like they are being treated as one of the lower teams in the marketplace right now. Only on Sports Grid. All right, fast forward for all on your facial. The Pharrella finish looks like uh, Sons and Mercury owner Rob Sarver has had enough of people calling him a racist, which he was dropping bombs at work for years and treating people like crap, allegedly. So uh, he was suspended for a year and fined him, and it took a matter of a week, and now he's going to sell both franchises and make a ton of money. He bought it for $400 million. He's going to sell it. Probably the, the team for about $1.8 billion plus the women's team. I mean, this guy's going to make a ton of money. It's going to be uh, over uh, probably $2 billion to sell them. So uh, the racist will, alleged uh, will have tons of money. They'll have tons of money so he can sail off to Key Largo. Uh, Kyrie Irving says that COVID-19 vax mandates were the, quote, biggest violation of human rights ever in this country, end quote. I got to tell you, bro, you need to shut your mouth. I mean, people are so sick and tired of listening to you give vaccine advice. I mean, honestly, you played 29 games last year, bro. You got swept. You suck. Okay, with all your vaccine ideas. Shut your face. Honestly, you're, you're just so painful. Uh, everyone thinks you're painful. Everyone, everywhere. Just so you know, with all your money, you're the most painful player in the NBA. Floyd Mayweather says that Conor McGregor rematch is in the works. Conor McGregor says he's not interested. Former UCLA basketball player Jalen Hill dies at 22. The guy went missing in Costa Rica and they found him dead. Mavia, can you change those vacation plans to Costa Rica with the monkeys and, and you know, the trees and everything? Can you just, can we just find another island? Kentucky court suspends a prosecutor who asked for nude photos in one of his court trials. Son of a New York federal judge accused of secretly recording women in sex acts. Guess he was busy. <laughs> GTD is next. Get my plays and in-game on my site, bro, on events.com. We'll see you tomorrow on Coast to Coast tonight.